It's hump day. Hump day? <laughs> it's hump day. Hump day? <laughs> I got some, but okay. All right, well, there we are. Hey, everybody, we are live <laughs> only one minute late. Uh, we were scrambling, not going to lie, but uh, Bradley got everything sorted out, so here we are. Uh, and this is Hump Day Hangouts, episode 137. Today's the 21st of June, so we'll do our thing real quick and say hi to everybody, and then uh, we will get started. So, uh, Chris, how's it going, man? Doing good. On a heat wave here in Austria. Yeah, what are you? What kind of temperatures are you dealing with? Thirty-four degrees Celsius. And yeah, that's like ninety something, I think, right? Yeah, ninety-three or so. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll pass. I'm living in luxury, man. It's like seventy-five. This has been awesome. It's, uh... <laughs> Hernan, how about yourself? You got like six feet of snow or something, or what's going on down there? No, it doesn't snow actually. It doesn't actually snow in in Buenos Aires, so it's not even funny, you know. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, you get the whole humid, the cold, but it's not even fun to go out and. But anyways, yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for tomorrow's webinar for the Battle Plan uh, members. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. Marco, how you doing, man? It looks pretty nice there. I'm guessing the weather's probably pretty good. Maybe. Maybe he's muted. Maybe not. All right. Well, I'm going to go with the weather is probably pretty good, but uh, we'll, we'll fill that in later. So Bradley, how you doing, man? Good. I'm glad that uh, I got it fired up at the last minute, man. It was my Chrome cache was, I guess, clogged up. I guess two gigabytes of cache is enough to slow down a browser. <laughs> Imagine that. So, <laughs> so I had to shut everything down, run CCleaner, and then start it back up, and it took longer than I expected. But we're here, so better late than never. Good deal. All right. Well, uh, just real quick, if you're new to Semantic Mastery, um, first of all, thanks for showing up to Humpty Hangouts. We certainly appreciate it. Um, you should definitely check out the battle plan. Uh, I'll share that link uh, shortly below. Um, and then um, also, if you haven't yet, for some reason, signed up for your free account at SERP Space, uh, head over there. Um, we got the Dubfew services there and also um, a couple free tools with more coming stuff um, like markup and stuff like that. Um, and then before we dive into stuff, I just want to share this is like Adam's little book report minute. I've been taking my book reading up a notch. I'm trying to knock out a book like every week or two. Um, and so this is High Profit Prospecting. Um, let's see, who's this by? Mark Hunter. So good book so far. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like if you're someone who does outreach for customers, who I'm guessing nearly everybody here should probably be doing that. Um, I think it's a, a good read. The big um, one is on prospecting, obviously, and then attitude as well as getting into the specifics of how you can approach people, um, which is really good. I don't come from a sales background. Uh, so it's been a good refresher. You know, we always hear about, you know, okay, here's the ABCs of this, but definitely good to go into that and get some more details. So a pretty good read. I think it was like 10 bucks on Amazon. So if you're interested in that, you should check it out. Awesome. Cool. That's a really good um, recommendation. I haven't read that one yet, but I'm going to add it to my list. I'm trying to do the same thing, Adam, is read a book about, well, about a book every two weeks or so. Uh, and I only got 30 minutes scheduled every day to read, but I'm trying to keep to that schedule so that I actually get it done. And um, I've just finished reading for the second time Bill Good's Hot Prospects book. So uh, that one's probably going to be a good one to follow up with. So I appreciate you pointing that out. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll probably post something on the page, on the Semantic Mastery page. If people are interested, if you guys are interested or you have any questions or anything, just pop a question on this page uh, here at the event, and uh, uh, we'll, I'll answer that. But anyways, um, I, you guys have any announcements, anything we need to cover today? I think we're good. I think so. All right, let's roll. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. Before I get into yeah, be, before sorry, you get into that, for you guys dealing with the heat, I I just want to show you something. I just want to <laughs> show you something, man. Dig that, motherfuckers! Dig that. <laughs> Seventy-five degrees, beautiful weather. Come on, man. Tropical Why climate. Why deal with the heat? Why deal with the cold? I mean. I have, I have a, a a little waterfall in the background, just just keeping me peaceful. Why you guys think that Marco's that Marco is subsidized by the government, you know, to do to to boost yeah, right? tourism? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's trying to log in, man. He's using my login, but so if you see two Marcos, it's Ed. That's cool. 
Ed is one of our uh, newer mastermind members. He's a real hustler. He's been out cr just crushing it and getting new clients and all. I mean, it's just amazing how much action that dude's taken. So uh, he's down there visiting Marco right now. And uh, if he can, he'll jump on. <clears throat> All right, so let's get to questions and stuff. There's something I do want to share in just a moment, though, just very quickly, because I want to show you guys something. Um, let me zoom in on all this first. All right, cool. So this is something you guys should be seeing my full screen, correct? Yeah, I got your whole desktop. Yep. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. All right, this is uh, from Pro Rank Tracker. This is a screenshot I just took yesterday of um, a local... Uh, video that I had done for the video production company that I do a ton of work for. Um, they had a, a client or, or one of their customers had uh, been used, like I guess had been paying for whole, you know, for SEO services for their video for about six months. And then they allowed their subscription to lapse or to, to uh, expire, I guess. And so I unlisted the video, um, which was in the number one position uh, for, I mean, for the six, six months or eight months, six or eight months, whatever it was that it was running before their subscription uh, expired. And once I, re you know, once it had expired, I just went through and unlisted the video, but it had been sitting at number one for, you know, six or eight months. Um, so when I unlisted the video, obviously it fell out of the, the uh, index for a while. And it was probably, I don't know, three or four months had passed before they resubscribed to the service. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know why they went so long without renewing, but whatever, they contacted the video production company and renewed their uh, video boost subscription, that's what they call it. And so I went in and just reset the video back to public instead of unlisted. However, it didn't just appear back in number one position, and I didn't expect it to. Um, in fact, I even charged the company, the uh, uh, video production company, another setup fee even though all I had to do was go in and unlist it, or I mean set it from unlisting the uh, unlisted the public, I still charge them the additional setup fee, which is a one-time fee for whenever I initially add a new video to a, a marketing campaign. And I told them, it was, it's been paused for the last few months, so I'm going to have to charge you an additional setup fee. Uh, and they said, that's fine, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, I went in and I set it to public, and I left it alone uh, for a couple days. Well, first of all, it didn't re-index right away which was kind of weird. But then when it did re-index, um, which I had to kind of force it to re-index, which again, I thought was a bit strange. But when it did, you can see where the, the, the two keywords, the two main keywords that I was tracking, which is basically one keyword, just a, a variation of it. Um, Cause that's, that's how I do it with the video production company guys. I always, you know, each video targets one keyword um, <clears throat> or a, a close variant so that it will rank for you know, the close variance of that keyword, if that makes sense. So I was only tracking two keywords for this one video, but you can see when it did re-index, it re-indexed at position nine and position uh, 12 or 13 respectively. And uh, it was, what was crazy was I, all I did was I put, it sent this video through a um, video powerhouse blast. I did a map or a, an embed blast of about 50 embeds. I did both primary and secondary embeds uh, of only 50. And then I went in and I set up a YouTube um, AdWords campaign, an AdWords for video campaign using uh, the video as the actual, and so let me just explain how I did this, guys. I set up inside of AdWords, I used in-stream video option, right? So it wasn't a video discovery ad. It was, I just took the same video that I wanted ranked, right? And I used that URL as the, the in-stream video ad URL. And then the, the landing page link that you click on from the in-stream ad, right? That's the, always the link that's in the bottom left corner of the uh, video when, when an in-stream ad is playing. That, all I did was use that YouTube URL, the same video that was the ad itself. I used that URL as the landing page URL, right? So does that make sense? So essentially, I, an in-stream ad that when clicked will take somebody to a YouTube video. And it's the same YouTube video. But what I did was I set up geographic targeting. And I went into uh, interest targeting using the in-market or ROI interest-based targeting, which is called in-market targeting. Very, very, very powerful. I started playing with that a lot recently, and I'm getting really good results, especially for local. So I set geo-targeting, and I used interest-based targeting, the in-market ROI targeting, and I went and I found that specific category, and this is a home services type of business, and I selected that proper category and I set my budget for $1 per day, guys. 
one dollar per day. Now, if anybody who's been following me for or following us for long, you know that for like the video production companies, I only charge a hundred dollars per month per video to rank or per keyword to rank for a uh, for, for them. That's what I provide as wholesale services. So I'm only making a hundred bucks a month, but I set up a thirty dollar or excuse me, a one dollar a day budget that has local IPs with people that are in market. Let me explain what I mean by that. Google understands now through browsing history, recent browsing history, what people are looking for. Like if they're in market, so to speak, for a particular product or service, then Google knows that because they've been searching uh, buyer type keywords, commercial intent keywords recently. It's in the recent browsing history, right? And so Google places those people into a bucket that uh, means that they're highly likely or they're, they're really engaged with that particular product or service or keyword at that moment. So it's, it's highly likely that they're in the market. That's why it's called in market for that product or service. So it doesn't matter what videos they were going to look at, the people in that bucket, doesn't matter what videos they were going to look at on YouTube my ad can play in front of any video a silly cat video it doesn't matter because they were had by by Google's own um you know Google has categorized them as being in market so they're likely to convert so the reason i'm explaining this to you is because with something so simple setting up a $1 a day ad and i got 10 clicks in the first day um, or no, I'm sorry, it was five clicks in the first day. I had 10 impressions, five clicks. So it was a 50% click-through rate on the video, uh, which was interesting, but they're all from local IPs, from people that are in market. So that means it's highly relevant traffic. It's relevant for two reasons, the geographic location, it's a local IPs essentially, um, which will count as a local IP click to that video, plus those are in market uh, visitors or viewers, right? Clickers, so to speak, YouTube users. They're in market for that particular product or service category anyway. So that means it's highly relevant. Well, Google and YouTube knows that. So now the traffic that the engagement that I just purchased from Google AdWords to that video was locally relevant and topically relevant. And it shot it direct th the very next day. It had jumped from uh, whatever this is, nine and 13 or whatever to the number one position. And in fact, one of these keywords is now triggering the great big video. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. It doesn't happen very often, but where the, the video is ranked number one and it's freaking huge. And it, it like there's, it, it takes up where like the maps pack would normally be that. And all I did guys, like I said, was just set up a local, uh, I, I ran a 50 embed blast through video powerhouse. And then I set up a local YouTube ad, and this was just yesterday. You can see that, um, or uh, you know, yesterday is when I took this screenshot, and it jumped basically in 48 hours. From it went from not being indexed to being indexed at like nine and 13 for that same for that variant that keyword to being number one, and also triggering that great big large video in the SERP, which is amazing. And I just wanted to kind of point that out, guys. Out point that out, guys, because I know we've talked about that here on Company Hangouts a lot about using AdWords. Because you're buying engagement signals from, and you can you can specifically pinpoint where you want the engagement signals to come from, right? You're paying Google for for engagement signals instead of buying views or buying fake social signals. You can buy real organic, uh, you know, like I say, they're organic because they're real. They're real click throughs and real views from real people on real IPs and real devices with real browsing histories in a real location, if that makes sense. And it just works like crazy. So any of you guys that are doing SEO, uh, video SEO stuff, especially local, guys, this should just be a standard operating procedure for any one of your local campaigns is set up an ad, uh, run the targeting like I just mentioned, geographic targeting. And even if you just do a dollar a day, just until you get it ranked and then pause your ad campaign, it'll help immensely. So brief little tutorial, hopefully that was helpful. Anybody want to comment on that before we get into questions? That was pretty amazing, Bradley. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's quite, I mean, it's just amazing. And uh, the fact that I saw it, like, you know, that it triggered those um, big, big videos, which is crazy because that's, that's rare that that happens. The six or eight months that it was ranked number one before I had unlisted it, it was, it was never a big video. So it had a, quite an effect. All right, cool. Earl's up first. He says, can you suggest a place to get double verified Gmail accounts? I can't have to seem to find, seem to find a source on Fiverr that I want to use. Okay. I'm going to recommend the guy that I've had, we have been using, we have, have been using for, I'd say over a year now. 
Um, but one of our mastermind members, Bo, uh, who's also our moderator in the Syndication Academy um, Facebook group, said that he's had terrible communication experience with with this dude. Uh, so anyways, I, I've never had any problems with him. He's always been really good about replacing any accounts. The communication has been good. So I'm going to point it out anyways, but just, I just want to, you know, bear our uh, mention full disclosure that one of our members is having issues with him. So just take that into account. I, this is the only guy I've used for bulk or uh, phone verified accounts. That's, um, been any good for like well over a year. So I've just stuck with him. It's bulk PVA.com. Yeah. I'd like to mention too that um, we ordered accounts and they were resold. Okay, so and don't so, use them is what you're saying. No, I'm not saying don't. I'm saying that when you get them, you have to change the the phone number the, and the the email, right? The the email that that you use to to recover the password. Switch that up right away in all whatever accounts that you order. Which is a pain in the ass, which is why you should have a VA. Yeah. Because they, they, they did get resold and so it was a whole big mess. And so, you know, we, we talked to him and he's he just gets so many orders that he's swamped. And so I think it's it's more a, a case of him not paying attention to what he's doing rather than being dishonest. Yeah. But I, I wanna add that that, that happened to us. Well, thanks. I appreciate that because again, and that's why I wanted to fully disclose what Bo had mentioned too, because like I said, I have never had any issues with him, but in part, the reason Marco just said that he thinks it's because he's getting too many damn orders. That's probably because I've recommended the dude quite a bit. He was extremely happy when I started recommending him because he was like, Oh, and maybe that's why I never have any issues with him because he always takes care of me because I sent so much business to him. <laughs> but regardless, uh, like I said, you know, be careful. Earl, that's the only guy I've used, but apparently there's people, some people have been having issues recently. So there you go. Chris says, I recently had a WordPress, had WordPress take down one of my syndication channels without warning. Not exactly sure why, maybe because some of the content was being syndicated with short codes that did not translate well to the WordPress site, or maybe it was posting too often. Wondering the best way to handle this. Do I try rebuilding all the site posts that used to be on WordPress all at once or over time or another WordPress site or just start syndicating with a new channel and not worry about getting the older stuff posted? Chris, that's going to happen from time to time. The regard, no matter what you do, um, there are going to be times where one of your web twos, even a branded property that you've taken well care of, will sometimes still get terminated uh, because of the automation that we're using that sometimes will trigger it. There's just a number of reasons. Um, it's rare the, the we try to, we go to great lengths through how we set up these accounts to prevent them from that happening, but it does happen from time to time and there's nothing any of us can do about it, right? Except try to prevent it, right? So Chris, uh, yeah, we've even had some of ours terminated um, and, and what you mentioned about a short code. So like if you were using a plugin or something on your main money site that inserted short codes into the post, which would, obviously when the page was loaded would convert into a script or an image or whatever it was that you needed it to be. Um, when it gets syndicated, that's not going to occur because that plugin's not present on the wordpress.com site, if that makes sense. So you got to be careful about that. We've had that same issue uh, on a number of occasions with some of the stuff that we've syndicated from our own blog, um, causing problems like, you know, form code, for example, opt-in form code that just looks like raw code on the page because it doesn't translate because it's not in a short code uh, and the plugin's not present, that kind of stuff. So you, you just got to be wary of all of that. Something that you can do if you are going to continue to use um, those kind of like short code plugins and things like that on your money site. Excuse me, I got somebody calling in. Hold on a minute, let me hang up on them. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. It's my Google voice number. It's a spam call, I'm sure. Um, okay, so uh, if you're going to continue to use those kind of... Um, it's still ringing. I'm going to have to let it just ring out. Um, if you're still going to use those kind of plugins, I would recommend that you just set your uh, WordPress post to uh, your RSS settings from full post to summary. Now, I know for branded properties, we, we, we like to recommend using the full post and the full text of the post instead of just the summary. But if you're using short codes and things like that from your main money site that aren't going to syndicate and post into the blogs of your syndication network, 
then you may want to use the summary post instead. Okay. Or reconsider what you're posting within the content of your posts so that you don't have those issues. You could do that as well. All right, Dave's up. He says, I have a new tier one network for YouTube. Uh, oh, as by the way, just so you know, do you try, I would say start a new wordpress.com site and then just start syndicating posts from that point forward, the, the, the moment of origin forward, if that makes sense. Cause I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about going back and, and publishing all the already published posts on the new WordPress site. I wouldn't worry about that. It's too much manual work. If you got a VA that you can send it to fine, but I wouldn't do it yourself. Uh, if it were me, I would just create a new account, attach it to the network, set up the automation, the triggers and all that. And then I would just post from that point forward. Okay. Dave says, I have a new tier one network for YouTube for a money channel. Is it a bad idea to upload the 30 videos at once? Will it cause problems with some of the new network properties getting that many videos all at once? Yeah, I wouldn't do that, Dave. Uh, I would probably not do more than like five posts per day. Try but again. you could do that, you know, five posts per day over six days. That's what I would do. And it, and it's not, it's just because when you hit a, a especially a new network uh, with like a whole bunch of posts all at once like that, it's likely going to be terminated. Okay. So you don't want to do that. In fact, like we always mention, or it's mentioned in the training, you should post a few posts as we call seed posts and leave it sit for a few days. Uh, posts with no links, by the way, or only links to other um, blog posts on that same platform. So in other words, if it's a blogger blog, you can link to another blogger uh, blog post from somebody else's blogger blog um, because it's still the blogger domain. I wouldn't have any external links. Okay. I would be an internal link to another blogger blog. It might not be yours, but it's somebody else's. That's the only type of link I would have. And then I let it sit for about seven days before starting to do any automated posting. And then when you do ramp up slowly, don't do 30 at once, do something like, you know, maybe a, a, a one or two a day for a couple of days, and then you can ramp it up from there. If you've only got 30 videos, I'd probably spread that out over, you know, a week to 10 days, something like that. If it's a new network, if it's an established network, you can be a little bit more aggressive. All right. Columbia, she's been crushing it. She's been a go-getter. Uh, Columbia, I'm really proud of you coming here every week and asking questions. And I see that you're going with the agency model. It sounds like you're uh, well on your way. And I uh, just wanted to say that that's awesome. We appreciate you being here and taking action. She says, my goal is to promote videos in five to eight niches, with each niche having a YouTube channel and associated website to support videos from multiple cities, as I'm wholesaling video promotion service. Very good. Uh, she says, if I set up five to eight YouTube channels with each having an associated website, can I put all of those on my main Google and YouTube account, or do I need to break them up under some separate persona Google accounts? Each, each associated website will just have a tier one network, but I will likely want to stack two or more tier twos on some of or most of the YouTube channels, which is, yeah, that's a good idea, Columbia. Um, is it a good idea to your main Google account? Okay. Again, and, and, and this is the same um, advice that I always use. Um, even though you're prob I can tell Columbia that you're going to be taking care of these networks and you're not going to be doing anything real spammy, um, you're setting up for long term, I still recommend that you would create each of the five to eight YouTube channels under a different persona account and then add yourself, Columbia Jones, your profile as a manager of all of them. So after you've created the YouTube channel uh, under a persona account, then you go in and you add yourself as a manager so that you can access, manage, and maintain all of those channels from your main Google profile. It'll make it convenient and easy, much easier to work on, but it will protect each one of those channels in the event, God forbid, that something were to happen to your account, Columbia, that you wouldn't lose all of those assets because even if your account got terminated, and again, uh, that's, you know, worst case scenario, but if your account got terminated for some reason or another, all of those other channels would still be present and available because they weren't your, you, you, as uh, the profile Columbia Jones, wasn't the channel owner. You were just a manager. If that makes sense. So I do that specifically for risk mitigation, right? Just set up different, create a different persona account, set up the channel and then make yourself the manager and that way it just uh you protect yourself so how many channels with each associated website can i run on my main google account without running into problems as i would be setting up five to eight niches all within a single month again it, if you do it 
it, you can you can manage up to 50 channels from any one profile so again it, set them all up underneath different like so the channel owners are different personas different uh, google accounts and then add yourself as a manager and you can add as many chan i mean up to 50 channels as a manager to your account columbia and that won't look weird at all because there's a lot of people out there that are you know um you know digital marketing consultants and they they manage a lot of channels and stuff so it's it's natural to do that i wouldn't worry about it if I do need to break these up and put them under separate Google accounts, would those persona Google accounts be a persona individual or persona business name? It can be a persona business name. It doesn't matter because you're setting up a business channel. Does that make sense? So when you create a persona, you're going to have a persona, a profile-based YouTube channel. That just comes associated with the Google account that you um, create. But when you go to set up a channel, you want to create a business channel. That's how you give it a brand name and all that other stuff. Okay. All right, great question, by the way, Columbia. <clears throat> Muhammad Zuppi says, hey, guys, I've started doing lead gen for a local home builder, and I have a question. It's a revenue share agreement. So for every sale he makes, I get a good amount. That's a great strategy, Muhammad. That's the same type of model that I prefer. Uh, I trust this guy since I've worked with him before, but I still want to make sure that I know what's going on. Is an answering service like the one you use on Local Kingpin the best way to do this? It is, it is in my experience, Muhammad. Um. So the reason why I say that is because I get any call that goes, okay, so on the lead gen sites that I have that um, on just about on, on about 95% of them, I have an answering service uh, call center set up that I pay for. It's my expense. But the reason I do that is because any call that comes through, it first, it does, it does several things. Number one, it screens the calls because anybody here that has been doing ha either has your own local business or you provide local business marketing services and you so you manage stuff for clients, you already know that you get freaking hammered with solicitation calls all day long from every type of business out there, from credit card processing machines to uh, you know, marketing services to Yelp. Yelp will call you 15 times a freaking week. Um, it's ridiculous. And so I use an answering service, number one, because it, it, it's an automatic call screening system. Any solicitation call gets screened out by the answering service. So it doesn't bother the contractor or the service provider who's purchasing the leads with a bunch of spam calls, right? So that's number one. Number two, any lead that's a valid lead is going to answer the call screener's questions, which means once that lead is done uh, or once, once, the, um, once the call is over, that's a bona fide lead that I can bill for. Now, obviously, I still get some solicitation leads that come through. In other words, they're people that answer some questions from the uh, call screener. And then um, so the lead still gets pushed through, but it's very clearly identified as such when it goes through. So what happens is with Answer Connect, that's the service I use, by the way, AnswerConnect.com. I've been using them for about five years. Um, great service. Um, anyways, I, I get a email copy of every lead call that comes through. And then the, it also gets emailed and texted to the service provider. And so again, I like to use it because it's a, it's a call screening system. I have a record of everything. I've got an email and a text record plus Answer Connect keeps records of everything as well. And so for me, that's how I validate everything. Now, if somebody submits a web form, a contact form, uh, you know, contact request form on, on a lead gen page instead of calling, then I get a copy of the email that also also gets sent to the service provider. And now I'm using Zapier or Zapier. I don't know the way proper way to pronounce it, Zapier, Zapier, whatever. But I'm using Zapier or Zapier to uh, send an SMS text alert. It connects with Twilio, but it'll, it basically monitors a Gmail address. And every time a new lead comes in from that lead gen funnel, it triggers uh, Zapier to send a uh, text message via... Uh, Twilio to the contractor notifying him that a new lead had come in and to check his email for the lead data. And that's only for con contact request form submissions, if that makes sense. Phone calls go through Answer Connect. Mm. Go may, ahead. May, may I add something, Bradley? Um, I think that this is really valuable. And, and you first told me about Answer Connect back in the day. I think it was two years ago. But I think that you're adding a lot of value to the process, right? Because if you can sell a qualified lead, because here's the deal: you can you can uh, you can sell that lead to one 
contractor, for example, or to one client, that will be like an exclusive lead, or you can get it qualified and sell it to multiple uh, contractors or to multiple businesses, right? You will need to be really clear that that lead will be, you know, sold to many so that, yeah, yeah I mean, the, the value of that lead usually decreases, you know, if it's a qualified plus exclusive lead, you can uh, charge premium for that because they are going through, it's not completely automated, they are going through some kind of interaction with a person, right? So I think that adds a lot of value and it will solve uh, a lot of problems in, 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 in terms of uh, tracking and in terms of qualifying the leads again because you know you want to send the contractor the best possible leads you know yeah. so I think that adds a lot of value it's a little bit more expensive to run it that way but I think it's totally worth it because again you can charge a premium for your leads because they are coming through a verified source right they're going through a human interaction first and then they're going to be pushed through the contractor that doesn't mean that the contractor doesn't have to move or, or, or your client will, you know, they will have to act fast because that lead is warm right on the spot, right? That they're hot, they, they've gone through one interaction, they're going through another. So they're really into the purchase process. Um, but I mean, that uh, adds something that you can 100% outsource. It's a little bit more expensive, but this is kind of the, the little things that add a lot of value to your business and will make the, those businesses stick with you for a longer time than any other, you know, lead generation company that does this massively and all they're doing are pushing calls. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the other part of that is, you know, uh, by offer, by providing the answering service, we're doing the service provider a favor too because the calls are automatically screened and it prevents their them wasting time and energy on answering the phone for spam calls or solicitation calls. And that's a huge selling benefit for contractors uh, or for service providers. Again, mostly for me, it's contractors. So, um, but, and, and like Hernan said, I also, you know, if you're going to sell, I, I promote my services as exclusivity of leads. It's rare that I will ever um, sell a lead to more than one um, service provider. It does happen from time to time, but it's, it's usually rare and it's usually because there's a, there's a specific reason for it. So I always just charge more per lead if I'm selling on a per lead basis, or if it's a uh, revenue share, like what you're talking about, Muhammad, um, then it's an exclusive lead anyways. That's just, you know, that's a given. So um, is, is the last part of your question, is it normal for keyword lists from AdWords to have names of different cities? Despite my living in Alberta, Canada, a large person on my AdWords list contains American cities and states. Yeah, that's because the the, the vast majority of search traffic is coming from uh, the US, Google US, but just, Muhammad, what you can do is, and, and this isn't an AdWords tutorial, guys. I certainly am not going to log into my AdWords dashboard to show you this. But Muhammad, what you can do is make sure that um, you set your advanced location targeting or advanced location options to where you are only in, um, you, that only only include people that are in your target location, not that are in and show inter or show interest in. That's number one. So do that, number one. Number two is set an exclusion list. That's something else you can do. And I, again, I can't go into it and show it to you here, but uh, you can set an exclusion list and actually specifically exclude like all 50, United or the United States, for example. And if you set that as your exclusion list, then people that are searching, even if they're in your target location, so let's say Alberta, Canada, but they search for, let's say, um, you know, remodeling company, uh, New York city, then if it's, if you have New York or all of United States in your in exclusion list, then it will prevent the ad from showing to them. Even if they're in your Alberta, Canada, and they're searching for one of your keywords, which might be, you know, remodeling contractor or, you know, home service, home, uh, you know, home builder or whatever it is uh, that your keyword is, it'll prevent it from showing to them because they're in, they're searching for, or showing an interest in a location that's on your exclusion list, if that makes sense. That's also really important for like um, call only ads too, guys, that you set your exclusion list to. All right. All right. So Greg Zuppi says, hi, wondering really how to test a new YouTube syndication network. How do we download a video from YouTube to test our new YouTube syndication network? Well, you can download it, use Firefox and use something like video download helper extension. Or something like that. There's a ton of them, guys. They're, they're a dime a dozen. Just go search Firefox YouTube download 
uh, extension or something like that and just pick one. The one that I use is Video Download Helper. I've been using it for years. And you can view in it just about any video uh, in that in the Firefox browser when you have that extension. And then you can just click a, the extension itself and download the video. You can do that. But why would you don't even need to do that, Greg? What I would suggest doing is setting up either a like trigger applet or setting up a subscription trigger applet. So and then publicly subscribe to one of the you know to another channel or, so, or something that you can upload a video. What I'm saying is you don't need to download. In fact, for what you're specifically asking, I would say just set up a like trigger applet and just go like the one of your videos on one of your other channels or or or, or at least if you don't have a video uh, in that specific niche that's your own video, then just go like somebody else's video that's in that niche. So it will help to theme your network too, because I I see what you're saying is about. Once it's tested, do we need to go into network properties and remove the syndicated video? Well, if it's if it's you know a th um, thematically relevant video, right? If it's themed, if it's relevant, then then there's really no reason to go in and do that and 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 um, delete the post from the network. My point is, set up a like recipe and just go like a video, whether it's yours or somebody else's, preferably one that's going to be relevant to what the network's about, so that you don't have to go in and delete it later. And that's how you can test it. Okay, Alexander, he comes every week now and asks questions as well. So, Alexander, what's up, buddy? He says, hi, guys. Good to be here again. Let me get, let's get down to business. I'll do my first video gig for a client. Sweet. He said he paid me to set up, set him to set up to him, but not enough money so I can make another one for me and use to rank videos as a service. Okay. Does using age expire web 2.0 accounts in the persona rings? would help boost rankings or will be worse because we have some random anchor text and referring domains theme. No, aged web twos will certainly help. I mean, look, if if you're doing it specifically for SEO purposes, then yes, using aged web 2.0s will help. Um, there's no doubt. I've seen some really strong tumblers that um, can do some really amazing things with, with some strong tumblers. And there, there's a million tumbler scrapers out there now, guys. Shit, you can go to Fiverr and like SEO clerks and those different, uh, probably uh, those types of services and get by tumblers now. Um, so, you know, it's simple to do. And yeah, that, those work for purely SEO purposes. You can absolutely do that. Now for branding purposes, I recommend that you set up your own with, you know, the branded username. Um, but again, for purely SEO purposes, yes, expired web two autos are certainly going to help. Okay. Should I add some RSS feeds to the endpoint accounts, accounts that don't trigger others? So that way I get more related content to build their theme topical relevance. You can, that's what, like out at tier two and stuff like that, if that's what you're doing. Uh, and you said this is a video gig. So chances are there, you've got, you know, multi-tiered networks anyways, then yeah, absolutely you can guys. That's the thing. If you, if you guys are, I mean, even for YouTube, but especially for blogs. Um, but here's the thing, guys, if you've got like a, let's say a, a two tier network for YouTube. And remember YouTube, we don't have to worry about footprint issues or anything else. But my point is, is if you're, if you're, if you're uploading videos, but you're not staying consistent and you're not uploading a lot of videos, but you want to keep increasing the power of the network, then yeah, set up some uh, related content triggers at, on the tier two networks, even for YouTube networks, guys. Because you can start feeding relevant content into those secondary networks. I don't do it to the branded networks. I never do it to the branded networks, but on the tier two networks or persona based networks, they can be tier one persona based networks tied to your YouTube channel. Right. But even for those, yeah, it makes absolute sense to, to use related content feeds to add additional content to those networks because it'll help to increase the relevancy. And it will, again, instead of all the content just coming from one source, which would be your YouTube channel, you start to make it look more natural because it's starting to curate it's essentially what you're doing, right? Other people's content, um, uh, related content. So absolutely, you can do that. I, I recommend doing that, in fact, um, on tier two stuff. Okay, uh, or is there a way to do it even for lower tier feeder rings, uh, a way to send content to tier one that would not be syndicated again on the other tiers? Um, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Again, I wouldn't, if it's persona-based tier one networks, you can add content into there and that'll take care of, the, the second tier networks because you can set the trigger up on tier one. But if you're doing branded tier one, then on the, then I would set the, the 
uh, related content triggers up on tier two because I don't like to feed other people's content into uh, branded tier ones. If that makes sense. Persona based is fine. Branded, no. If you guys would like, uh, if or excuse me, if you can, would like to hear more about backlinking strategies, those kind of persona accounts. Thanks, guys. Backlinking strategies is just um, contextual links to those properties. If it's out at tier two, you can be even more aggressive, more spammy. Generally, what we like to do is contextual tier uh, ones to the network properties. Um, typically on domains that have not the pages. We've had some issues with people saying, I just got our link report and the PA is one on every link page that was created. Uh, well, that's what happens <laughs> when you create a new page online. It is a PA of one, period. It doesn't start with anything higher than one. And so anyways, my point is, is that you can, we try to use domains with higher decent metrics, relatively speaking, right? Compared to the, all the other spam sites out there. Uh, and in set contextual links, we try not to hammer our first tier or excuse me, our network properties anywhere between 50 to 125 contextual links per property. And then we throw spam behind those. Okay. Uh, real quick, Bradley too. Uh, Alexander was asking and for the related content feeds, what tool would you recommend? RSS Masher or RankWiz or something else? Uh, yes, any one of those. Um, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. It, um, Rank Feeder, which is Lisa Allen's tool, is a great tool. That's more of an SEO tool, um, which is great. It's very, very powerful. It works really well. It, it, it basically is running on the principle of co-citation, and it works really, really well. Um, RSS Masher, which is Damon Nelson's product, that's also good. That's more of a... There are some SEO benefits that you can do with that, but it's more of a, in my opinion, more of a traffic um, tool as uh, than it is just an SEO tool. I think Rank Feeder is very specifically an SEO tool, and RSS Masher has a little bit. It's not as good for SEO, but it has other functionalities that make it better for other things, if that makes sense. So you have to figure out what your objective is and select the correct product based upon that. Okay, cool. Um, you think that answered that? Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, also, I don't know. Let's see. That was Alexander. Um, Alexander, if you're in the SEO Academy or Syndication Academy, excuse me, uh, the last update webinar we did, I t showed, I think it was the last update webinar, I showed how to use Zapier or Zapier, whatever, for creating um, your own custom RSS feeds. <laughs> And it's awesome because you can basically code your own stuff. You can like literally you can create your own RSS feed in Zapier now, like your own custom feed with different content sources. You can splice, you can mash, you can add uh, links into into the every single feed item. You can add a citation in every feed item. All that was covered in the most recent update webinar. So go back and watch it. Marco, were you going to say something? No. Okay. Don's up. What's up, Don? He says, for full-on SEO clients, not just video ranking clients, are you using your YouTube channel for putting up client videos and ranking them or doing it in-market ads and doing the in-market ads, or do you use your own YouTube channel? So are you using your YouTube channel for putting up client videos and ranking them and doing the in-market ads, or you use your own YouTube channel? I think that was a that was the Department of Redundancy Department. <laughs> uh, yes, I... I'm, I'm still using my own channel. Um, now, listen, what I'll do is I'll, I will take what, when a client has a video I'll, or, or if I have a video made for a client, which happens a lot, then I'll, uh, I will upload that video to their channel, but then I'll also upload it to my channel because my channel is the one that has all the SEO, all the networks. It's got the authority, the relevancy, all that kind of stuff. Typically, because again, I've already, most of my con, my, my, um, unless it's a client that I don't have a network built for, like if it's in an industry that I have nothing for, in which case I'll just do it on their channel because I'm not, I'm, I'm not like, but that's why I try to stick with just clients, uh, or lead gen assets that are in this, the categories that I've already built the infrastructure for, if that makes sense. I don't like to take, I did just take on a new client, uh, three or four. No, I guess it's been about five weeks now because I got the first subscription payment from them. So it's been about five weeks, but, um, and they're, they're preschool. I've never done any preschool marketing, but it was a client referral from one of my best clients that I've had for five years. So that's why I took the job. Um, and so I, I don't have a network for them. 
Does that, if that makes sense? So basically, and I've already done a couple of videos for them, but I put it on their channel that, because again, I don't have a network built for preschools <laughs> and I don't plan on building one either. So my point is, um, I use my network where it's relevant, where it's, it fits for the SEO part of it. And then yes, I'll just use, because I'm trying to rank the video through my channel and my network, then I, that's the same video that I will use in the YouTube ad. If I'm, if I'm setting up the local, I, you know, the local, um, local clicks campaign, which is essentially what I'm doing. Um, but again, I'll, I, I can still upload the video to their channel as well. That way they feel all nice and warm and fuzzy that their video is on their channel. But all the benefit of that video is coming from my channel because that's the one that's ranked and pro providing the, the, the clicks and the leads and the exposure and all that kind of stuff. All right. Real quick, uh, I'm having a conversation with somebody on the YouTube channel. I know some people get lost there and then go over to the YouTube channel instead of uh, the Google event. So I'm going to double check and make sure everyone's able to get to the event page. Um, but uh, I see that you're commenting on this page too, but sorry, we don't have time to call everyone out by name and ask them to leave their comments. So um, if anyone else is watching this and is confused, the way we do it is you just come to this page, write your questions on the event page right here. And, you know, we do first come, first serve. Um, so sometimes we don't get to all the questions, but, um, you know, that's the way it is. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty cool. Um, thank you, Paul. Paul says, I use this guy for Google and YouTube accounts. Haven't had any problems. He's very reasonable. Live. Mana. I don't know what the hell that says, but he's on Skype. I'm assuming that's his Skype username. Yeah, it must be. I'm not sure what the live colon means. but That might be part of his name. I know you can use periods and other things as part of your Skype name. So that might be it. That's pretty cool. I'm going to actually put that in a notepad file because I might reach out and see what he's, I'll say, Hey, you want some business buddy? <laughs> Cause this other dude, like we blew his business up, man, because we sent him so much damn work and uh, now he can't keep up with it and it's quality starting to slip. So uh, maybe I'll reach out to this dude, see if he's um, interested in some additional work. Thanks Paul. Uh, okay entrepreneur consulting are we able to join the group of video i'm not sure what you mean yeah don't worry i answered him okay all right um yeah adam if you want sir yeah go ahead we still got about 10 minutes. yeah i was gonna say uh paul i think is one of the people who might be able to uh join us i just wanted to let everyone know that we're looking at some possibilities for a semantic mastery meetup uh in the portland area portland oregon um, in September. So we're going to be having some more information about that. Uh, if you're within, you know, a few hours of there and you'd be interested in that, uh, you know, stay tuned. We'll have some more, uh, information on that as far as where we can meet up, but we'd like to do, a, uh, you know, it'd be a, I don't know. We haven't even decided the details, a few hours, get together, talk SEO, talk marketing, talk shop. Um, I guarantee you have a beer or two and uh, have a good time. So we'll be having some more information about that soon. Yeah, it's not going to be like, we're not like hosting a live event type thing, guys. It's going to be like literally a meetup, like a casual get together if anybody wants to come out and, and see, you know, and hang out with us and have a few drinks and just talk marketing. And really, it's more about networking. It's not like we're going to just have some training session. It's not like that at all. It's about networking, rubbing elbows, meet and greet, that kind of stuff. And obviously, we'll be talking shop. There's no doubt. But uh, that's what it's going to be. And it's, it's just going to be like kind of like away we're gonna we're gonna start trying to do that um at least we're, we're planning on wanting to do that a couple times a year so in various parts of the country so in the u.s at least as far as i know i don't like to travel <laughs> all right cool uh, also real quick sorry real, yeah i was gonna say alexander are you asking a question about the webinar and zapier if you are before we hop off um say something can i get one of those in my location like a meetup Alexander says, you guys have already get into the limit of playlists on a channel because if I want to create one playlist for each focus keyword on a city, I'll end up with it. Yeah, no, I don't. I mean, I don't do that. Um, I Look, I don't create play um, like Bill Cousins. He's got a great software, Rocket Video Ranker or whatever. He's got a playlist option in there that will create a single playlist for each keyword as well. I don't I don't do that. To me, that is just way too much overkill. And if it, it honestly, I just I always use uh, playlists as like a container. It's like a silo. That's it. So um, you know, I try to go broad. So like uh, broader type keywords, uh, more top of funnel type keywords with the playlist, and then I put all of like the supporting keywords, longer tail stuff within that playlist. That makes sense. 
So I don't know what there. I don't know if there's a limit to how many videos you can put on a playlist or how many playlists you can have on a channel. I don't know that because I again I don't use them like that, so I've never um, played with that. All right, that's just too much work in my opinion. Um, the other idea is to get just one playlist per city. And inside it work one main keyword plus internal link words for other important keywords. Yeah, I mean, again, I would recommend doing, um, you know, it depends on how you're going to categorize or silo out your channel, right? You can do a city playlist. And that is, and remember, you can have a video in more than one playlist, guys. So let's say, let's say that you are providing marketing services in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, well, let's say in all of Georgia, for example, and Atlanta is one of the cities. So and let's say that you work with plumbers, electricians, and uh, HVAC worker um, com contractors. Let's just say that those are the three types of businesses that you work with. I recommend you should work with one and one only, but let's just say three. Then you could have an Atlanta business playlist that has all three of those business types in it because the common denominator, the common theme is they're all Atlanta-based businesses. Then you could have an electrician um silo or playlist and all electrician videos go in there one for plumbers one for hvac right so you could do that and then again you could have like you could have uh the electrician playlist for example you could have atlanta and what savannah is another city in georgia because the common denominator there is they're all electrician videos right so you could have electrician videos from different cities in that playlist if that makes sense so the point is is you can have a video in more than one playlist the idea is to keep the category or the theme relevant throughout. Does that make sense? So that, again, I wouldn't, I, you can have multiple playlists and there's a reason for using multiple playlists so that you can increase relevancy um, across different keywords or different geographic locations as needed. All right. Uh, let's see. Are we almost done, Bradley? Where is the link to the webinar about? Oh, man. Awesome. Savior. Thanks. Yeah, that's the last update webinar that we did in syndication academy and for whatever reason it wasn't posted in the members area after we did it and i just posted it uh a couple days ago maybe it was friday of last week so it is in the members area now in the update section uh hundreds of counts thanks paul we appreciate that uh, let's see <laughs> fuck you wayne <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> Uh, yeah, tell me where to get access to the IF. Uh, yeah, that's the Syndication Academy, the members area. So it should be members.syndication.academy. That's the login screen. All right. Um, and real quick, Bradley, just uh, since we're out of questions on this page and we got a couple minutes, um, over on the live chat on the YouTube side of things, somebody was asking, was asking, are we the ones who said to use the um, Network Empire Silo plugin? Yes, I mentioned it. Gotcha. Somebody okay. asked about it and I mentioned it. Cool. So you still use it? Yeah, I mean, I'm not building WordPress sites that much anymore. Very rare. Usually now when I build a WordPress site, it's only for the blog. And that's it because I'm using ClickFunnels now as my website builder for just about everything. Um, gotcha. However, I'm about to start a project that I am going to need to build silos. And so, uh, and just so you guys know, I, like on all the sites that I have that are existing sites that have been siloed for the last four years, I've been, I've been using that plugin. Yes. It, what, it was originally called the DWS Silo Builder. I don't know what it's called now. It's a very simple plugin. As far as I know, it's free. It used to be free. That's what I've used. Now, again, if I'm going to silo out another site, um, I, ha I don't even know what the other options are now because I've just never used anything other than that. So, cool. Anything else? I think we're good. Uh, last call. We got a couple minutes here. Um, I think. That's about it. Anybody got any more announcements or anything else coming up? Let me check our calendar real quick before we hop off. Do, do, do. Nope, Hernan mentioned it, the Battle Plan Buyers Update webinar. Um, I'll pop a link in if you want to grab the Battle Plan. Um, I highly suggest you do that. We'll have the update webinar tomorrow. And then we'll have some news going out um, about a good webinar with Keith and Allison on Monday. Um, so we got some good stuff coming up this uh, in the next week. Yep. Yeah, I won't be here next week, guys, because um, I'm going on vacation. So I might pop in, depending on what's going on. It looks like my video is all choppy. It's weird. Uh, anyways, uh, but I won't be here next week, but it looks like the rest of the team will, has got it covered. So Marco's going to be rubbing the weather in everybody's face as usual. <laughs> so. Of course I am. 
Why, why else would I live in Costa Rica in paradise if I couldn't rub the weather in your face? <laughs> That's right. All right, guys. Well, everybody, um, have a good day. Uh, let's see. We have a webinar tomorrow, don't we? That's correct. We, plan webinar. Yeah. Correct. Correct. That's right. yep. Okay. So we'll see a lot of you on that. Otherwise, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Thanks. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.